My name is Wayne Kelly and I'm a craft beer enthusiast. Back in the early 90s, I managed a craft beer bar and became an avid home brewer. Since then, I've tried as many beers as I could get my hands on. I'm not a famous beer expert, but I do love craft beer and I love everything involved with the craft beer industry. My wife Nadia has become a craft beer fan too, so she's joined me on my quest to explore the American Beer Revolution. We're visiting Blue Mountain Brewery in Afton, Virginia. This is the original of Blue Mountain's two locations. A large outdoor beer garden and spacious indoor tap rooms attract a lot of craft beer lovers. Blue Mountain also has a full kitchen with a full menu that can satisfy everyone's appetite. We caught up with Chef Rob. Let's see what he's up to. This salmon smelled really, really good while he was pulling this off the, uh, the grill. And now I feel like I have to eat salmon today. I sell a hundred pizzas in a day without... A hundred pizzas in a day? That's yeah. a lot. Is that your number one seller? Oh, uh, no. No? No, I mean, we sell a lot of pizza, but uh, no. It's... We sell a lot of sandwiches. I mean, we kind of... We sell a lot of full pork. I think that's always 600 pounds. It's always a lot of sales. Yeah. You he went to go pick out a pig for the pig roast. Yeah. So we. So because we work so tight with the farmer. Um, I took my kids out and there was piglets and we let them hold the piglets, but um, I also went to pick the pig for the pig roast and I tried to get them to let me spray paint our logo, like stencil it on the side of the hog, but uh, so, but it's, I guess that wasn't a good idea. Yeah, for some reason that wasn't a good idea. I would have let you, but... I thought it was, I mean, I don't Could have used food coloring, you know. Somebody said it had to be like toxic paint. Yeah, whatever, you know. <laughs> the pig might have liked it. Uh, we go through about 500 pounds of local ground beef. Uh, we sell probably 300 plus pounds. Buy these organic chicken from the valley. Yeah, I saw uh, that on your menu. That's awesome. Blue Mountain uses locally raised organic chicken, and they use as many locally sourced ingredients as they can get their hands on. Now it's time for me to get my hands on their real deal pizza. That looks pretty damn good. What do you think? Can you smell it? Nah, sorry, you can't. I don't know whether to eat it or marry it. <laughs> Can I be in love with two people at the same time? My wife and a pulled pork sandwich? No, I don't think that's allowed in this state. No, well. This is bigger than my head, and I don't remember who it was, but when I was a kid, somebody once told me, never eat anything bigger than your head. But uh, they obviously never had a pizza from Blue Mountain Brewery, so they didn't know what the hell they were talking about, did they? Yeah. And on cue, the salad arrives. Thank you, you couldn't have timed that any better. <laughs> That's not a salad. That's that's not a salad. That that's that's something much more than a salad. And I mean, look at that. That's beautiful. It was time to talk to Chef Rob and see what secrets we could get him to tell. So Chef Rob, 
how long have you been? Uh, how long have you been doing this here, Blue Mountain? Uh, I've been at Blue Mountain since the beginning of 2012. Okay, so it's been January 2012. It's been, it's been a while. Then you've been doing the the chef the chef thing for a while. Oh, uh, for uh, I guess like 21. Yeah, that's a while. 21 <laughs> years now. That's a while. I just tasted your, your pulled pork sandwich. It's really, really good. Um, there's something about the pork that's just a little bit different. It's got some seasonings to it. It's got a nice, some nice saltiness. I really liked it. And uh, what I like, and it doesn't sound like much, but it's the small touches that matter. I like the toast bun because a lot of people don't to toast the bun, and this makes it makes a huge difference. It, it makes a huge difference. So the spice is we call it Big Bad Daddy's Big Bad Spice. Big I, Bad Daddy's. There's a whole story behind Big Bad Daddy <laughs> Spice. Um, that goes back to when I was like 19 working in Kentucky. Okay. But um, <laughs> essentially it's my spice. Um, it's a good spice. It's a really good spice. But we, um, it, it pretty much goes on everything. And we try to grill on wood because we have the barrel house. Mm -hmm. uh, when they're done with the barrels, I'll chop them up and grill on a whiskey barrel. Ah, so he's the person who takes most of the barrels. So we, <laughs> so we will chop the barrels up, we'll smoke with them, we'll grill on them. Have you made anything like totally crazy here from Merlin or just, just very strange for Blue Mountain? So Taylor and I come up with, uh, sometimes there will be people that want to do a beer tasting menu. Right. Um, and so one time we, uh, he came at me with some beers and I... I love it when people come at me with beers. I was I'm just, you know, like a list of beers and right. so... The best part about that is we get to sit around for an afternoon and sample beer. Right. We did like, you know, like a, a fried bologna sandwich. <laughs> but we took the bologna and we put pimento cheese in it right. and rolled it up and then okay. breaded it and fried it and made this like hot sauce wow. mayonnaise with, uh, you know, it was just really... No, I bet it was damn uh, good, wasn't but, it? And it was, and I was like, I can't believe we're serving... <laughs> Like fried bologna, yeah, yeah, it was it was you know it was a fried bologna sandwich, but it wasn't. Right. Um, sure. It had all the elements of what you would put on it, um, but it was really good. And it, it was, was like funny. the Frankenstein of bologna sandwiches, but like a good one. A really, yeah, really good Frankenstein. If you could pull that that apron off and uh, sit down and have a beer, what what would you choose right now? Uh, so we did a we did a beer called Courageous. It was uh -huh. a brown ale, right? Um, and it was probably one of my. Um, was one of my favorite beers that favorites. we've ran. Um, it was uh, named after a guy that worked in our kitchen, the grill with me, um, that had leukemia and passed away. Oh, wow. And so the, his name is Ray. Mm -hmm. And um, we ended up donating some of the money back for cancer to sure. research. And um, But uh, it uh, we've, we've ran it, uh, I think, two or three times. Right. And uh, I'm always on that one. Do they have that one now? The, no, oh, unfortunately not. But darn. I mean, you have my favorite ever. Uh, that would be my favorite ever. So um, I try to stay on the lighter side just because. That's smart. Uh, That's smart. So I can behave. So he can behave. Yeah. Ooh, behave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we do a uh, uh, Uber pills. Oh, cool. That's um, extra hot pills. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. So you're getting that, that lighter beer, so you can drink more, but you're getting that. Uh, in the extra, in the extra hops. I yeah, can see you that. can't. You can't drink more of this. Yeah, Uber pills. <laughs> I get it. It's, it's, uh, it's big and strong. So big and strong. I, I think we just summed it up. And there's probably some other things in there that are part of a story that we're not going to talk about today. But we'll stick with big and strong. If you could be one of your dishes, what would you be? Something that's not on right now, but it's the right. hot brown, which we run occasionally. Uh, and it has been on the menu before, but um, being from Kentucky, we uh, it's kind of like... For the people who have no idea what that is, explain what that is. It is uh, <laughs> it's uh, oven roasted turkey, um, a s applewood smoked ham, uh, it's served open face with a cheddar of Mornay's. Uh, Mornay sauce um, on a couple layers of thick brioche or sourdough, wow. and uh, it's got wearing two strips of bacon. Wearing two strips of bacon <laughs> and a roasted tomato uh, right on top. It sounds like an outfit. <laughs> it's uh, it's it, yeah. 
um, and stick with you all day too. So, so you could you could wear it or eat it. Or yeah. So we've got a uh, we got a pint of lager here that uh, Chef Rob was kind enough to bring out to me because how dare me I didn't I didn't have a beer. I know, right? So uh, this is a lager which he just finished telling us is in just about everything. So uh, obviously not everything. I don't think they put it in the pizza, but uh, just like the the Big Daddy spices is in here, and it's some of it might be in there, some of it might be on there. It goes in everything apparently. Uh, the lager goes in a lot of stuff too. I think he mentioned the chili, which I'm not eating today, but that's really cool. Um, I like it when a brewery has a kitchen and they incorporate some of their beer because I mean, hey, you got lots of it. Might as well use it for more than just drinking, right? So, cheers. Yeah. That's what getting messy for. That, that is really, really tasty. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just really, really tasty. And again, the uh, the spices that they add to it come out. It's a little spicy. I don't mean like hot, hot, but they're spicy. There's just it's a little bit of a uh, little bit of heat to it, but not much. And it's the saltiness that just tastes really, really good on this. And the coleslaw adds some nice crunch to it. It's nice and creamy. Just um, just goes together really, really well. Mm. That is good. That's a good potato salad. Trust me. I've had lots of potato salad. My mom is German. I've had lots of potato salad in my life because the Germans like to make potato salad. I don't know why I'm talking like this because it doesn't sound German, but who knows? Abundanza. So, getting ready to try this pizza. Um, it's huge. There's no way that I would ever even think of, of eating the whole thing. After all, this is not a food challenge show. There's so much flavor going on. We got we got ground pork, we got pepperoni, we got ham, we got pepperoncini peppers. We have what I believe is spinach, black olives. And it just tastes so good. Can't forget this piece. Mmm. Don't get that in your eye, that'll burn. We love your mind for the pizza. pizza. And the beer. And the pizza. beer. Good and pizza. Beer. What are you going to drink? Yep. What would I get to eat? Drink? The blonde drink. Oh, you're already drinking. The, la the last blonde? Yeah, yeah the, last the last blonde. The last one. Are you drinking the blonde? Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. A lot, of, a lot of women prefer their blondes. Yeah. Okay. So what are you drinking? The popcorn. Popcorn. Pop 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 you like it? I hate it. It's yeah. awesome. We caught up with Matt Nucci, one of the co-founders of Blue Mountain. Uh, we're here with Matt, and Matt, what is your official role here? Uh, I'm one of the owners, one of the founders, and awesome. I kind of run the operations here at Blue Pup. Okay, great. So, one of the founders, one of the owners, so you've been involved with this since, when did, when did Blue Mountain start? We opened start? in 2007, um, but we started uh, about a year before that, all the planning, and mm -hmm. we purchased this land, and we kind of started from the ground up. Yeah, that's what I heard. And now, is this the 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 first location, or was the Barrel House the first? Location? This is the first location. This is the first yeah, location. Where it all started. Okay, great. So, where we're standing right now was, was this it, was this it to, to start with? This was it, the brewery, and then just the one small room out here mm -hmm. is how we started. And okay. Then we added the uh, other addition. Uh, I guess maybe two or three years after we were open, mm -hmm. um, and just continued to grow. Yes, it has. How much can, can you produce or do you produce right now in, in this location? Oh, uh, you know, we've done between two and 3,000 barrels a year. Oh, wow, uh, okay. Pushing almost 3,000 barrels. Um, we have, uh, you know, we have one full-time brewer and then a brewer at South Street, our other brewery. Right. out mm -hmm. here twice a, twice a week. Um, and then uh, 
between myself and Taylor, mm -hmm. we're pretty much running this place uh, yeah, max out. Right. And so what you brew here, uh, is is this for what's sold on tap here? A lot of it is for here on tap, um, but we do look, do a lot of keg distribution out of here. Oh, okay, so, yeah. That, that's so true. usually on, on average we'll do a 30 barrel tank, maybe 15 barrel stays here, the other goes out for distribution. Um, just give us a quick rundown on how you got into it, because sure. it's, it's always interesting. Mine's pretty straightforward. I was a home brewer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in college, so I, yeah. uh, you know, started brewing in, in buckets like the right here on the floor. So, you know, background is all from home brewing. Um, I spent some time in college in Europe, which definitely opened up my, my eyes to sure. beer. My Absolutely. parents lived in Europe when I was in uh, college, so I spent some time in France. So I think that exposed me to a whole array of different types of beer sure. I wasn't used to here in the States. Especially this was, you know, early 90s when there really wasn't much choice. After a few years apart, Matt, Taylor, and Mandy reunited. We came back together after mm -hmm. years of being kind of apart, um, and him and his wife, Mandy, the three of us, we'd come out to the wineries out here a lot. And I think I remember one day we were sitting there and we were like, this is great drinking wine, but it'd be much better if we were drinking beer. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Nothing wrong with wine. Yeah. But beer is better. So it kind of came up with the idea then, we kind of modeled this after the wineries. You've got this beautiful location. So, yeah, I'll drink it at home, but hey, it's a nice day outside, yeah. like today. Yeah. You know, let's make the hour drive and sit and look at the mountains. It's, 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 yeah. amazing. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So, Matt, what's your favorite beer to brew? Uh, we do a, um, a double IPA called Hop Duster, which I really enjoy. Yes, it Just because it has, you know, it's, it's more work, but all the hop additions, it smells awesome in here. I'm sure it um, does. And then we do another one. Um, Called Hop Tub, which is our wet hop beer. Um, you know, we grow hops here. We grow hops at our production facility. Also, mm -hmm. we have a big festival where people come pick hops for two hours and get free lunch. Usually, the second week of August. Second week of August. Keep that in mind, folks. And then we'll take all those hops the next day and actually use our mash tun as a hop bag. So we pack that. Oh, great! Hops. Wow. So after we boil, we pump it back into the mash tun. Sure. And that's a fun one because it's, it's a lot of work, but it smells. Is it kind of like a whirlpool that, that's going on? Uh, there? No, we just we kind of either use a sparge arm or uh -huh. we come to the bottom and just let it soak all those hops, and then we go to the fermenter after that. Oh, wow. So, okay. So we have about two to three hundred pounds of wet hops in there. Wow. It's a lot. It smells incredible in here, so that one's always fun. Yeah. Have you ever like jumped inside afterwards just to yeah, like we do. encase yourself in we the smell? We do have to get inside the mash tun <laughs> to clean it. Uh, that's the only tank we climb in, but after that beer it's, it smells pretty good. I think it may have just given him an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I would do it's it. It's a hop spa. Yeah, yeah. hop spa. <laughs> so what's your favorite beer to drink that you guys produce? Uh, we produce, um, that always changes uh, just sure. as time goes on. Uh, Coffee Stout is actually mm -hmm. a, a beer that the um, recipe I came up with. I'm a, I like that one. I being from coffee industry before this. True, that's right. I do like that one a lot. Um, I love our double IPAs, although I'm a little burnt out on double IPAs right, right now, so I'm kind of <laughs> shifting um, to some other lighter stuff. Um, we have a Belgian beer on right now, our mm -hmm. Blondale. Always love that style. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to know anything else, you write us and we'll find out. So I appreciate your time. No problem. Thank you. Thanks guys. so much. Yep. <laughs>
even in the small glass, I get a really nice dose of hops. It smells really, really good. That's nice, it's very smooth. For a double IPA, you know, sometimes they can be a little bit rough, but that's really smooth. It's got a real silky mouthfeel, and the hops aren't so bitter, and they're a little bit floral. So it's a, it's a nice departure from your typical double IPA. This is their blonde. I prefer brunettes, but um, you know, blondes are nice too, so. It's got a nice biscuity, malty smell that a blonde, you know, is supposed to have, like a lager or a pilsner. It's quite nice. That's really good. It's um, got a really good mouth feel for a blonde. Sometimes they're a little thin. Um, there's a nice sweet malty flavor but not too sweet uh, a little bready a little perfumey uh, which I'm assuming is coming from the hops it's, it's really refreshing this is their lights out this is the beer that we were being told about at the uh, the barrel house that they didn't have which is their seasonal so we're gonna give it a sniff Unfortunately, these tiny glasses, it doesn't really allow us to catch much of the, uh, the aroma, but um, it, it looks really, really nice. It's uh, kind of a caramelly copper color. Well, I can't smell it, so let's go ahead and taste it. For a seasonal ale, it's nice because it's not spiced like a lot of those holiday ales that are out there, which are good, uh, but you're not always in the mood to drink spices. So this is quite nice. This is almost like an Oktoberfest. It's the closest thing that I can I can think of is what it comes to. But uh, apparently the dog doesn't like it. But uh, it's really nice and malty. It's got some caramel flavor to it. Um, just a, a little bit of bitterness that lingers after you drink it. It's, really really good so this is their mule which was on a nitro tap kind of like the brand everybody knows that starts with a G which I'm not allowed to say I think they're from Ireland or something but you can see the head is nice and creamy from that nitrous or nitro whatever <laughs> smells really nice it smells a little bit like a, like a little bit of coffee a little bit of just roasted grain smell. Can't see through this sucker, but I don't think you're supposed to. Wow. Really smooth, really creamy, real velvety. Really tasty. It almost tastes like a, uh, I don't know, if you melted down a, uh, uh, a bitter chocolate bar and then uh, you know, maybe mixed, mix that with some really tasty beer or stout, you, you get this. So a real nice, mild, yeah, I think that was the beer. A really nice, mild chocolatiness to it, but very smooth, very velvety, real silky. It's pretty, pretty nice. Look at that lacing on there. That just, it'll take a year for that to go away. All right. So now we've got the Dark Hollow, which we've been hearing about since the day we visited the, the Barrel House. It's all about the Dark Hollow. They have different variants of this, but um, this, is, this is the one that they're, uh, they're really, really proud of. And I believe they're coming out with a special edition of this or a variant of this um, in December. So this is not it, but this is, um, this is its, its baby brother. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at it. I can't see through that one. Ooh, wow. Um, kind of a whiskey product smell, bourbon. Just light. Wow. That is some beer. So this is obviously the beer that they, they age in uh, bourbon barrels. 
it's very obvious, but at the same time, it has a bit of a caramel and toffee, um, caramel toffees type of flavor. So it's not just like, oh my God, all I taste is bourbon. That's there. But uh, some really nice other flavors that are playing on the tongue. It's really smooth, very velvety. Uh, it's really, really nice. Not something you'd want to drink all day uh, when it's 90 degrees outside when you're mowing the lawn. It would probably kill you. You'd die with a smile on your face, but this is more uh, something to drink on a day like today when it's a little chilly outside, wind's blowing. They got some nice uh, nice fire pits and fire rings to sit around. So uh, this, is, this is quite, quite good. Cheers. What a shame, they're almost gone. <laughs> so, uh, what are you drinking today? Um, Full Nelson. Full Nelson. Is it your favorite one here? It's probably my favorite one. And I see you drink a little teeny tiny beer. Yeah, it's the uh, bourbon infused one. I think the that is good. Yeah, it's the Dark Hollow, yeah. I tried that earlier. Did you drink a bigger one earlier, or is that it? No, I actually had the Persephone. Ah, yeah. that is good, too. It's freaking the lights out. Okay, and how do you like it? I love it. You love it? So, fabulous. You I would highly recommend it to anyone. Except I can't have your beer. i got to get my own, right? You can have a sip yeah. of this. No, oh, there's not enough in there. <laughs> What's up? What are you drinking? Well, it ain't Coors Light, unfortunately. <laughs> well, that's good because we don't serve that here. Yeah, yeah it's you good. Know, I don't know. It's a Kolsch. Are you good? The Kolsch? Okay. Yeah, it's very good. Well, I like it. We planned to come up here to the mountains and drink all day. That's a good plan. So you can't go heavy when you get here that early. Well, you so you, shouldn't go heavy. You need to go light and ease into the day. Ah, yes. Good advice. And it looks as if these folks are having a great day. Well, except this guy. 